Good evening. Hello. This is All the Talk with Greg. This is episode, I don't know which one. Uh, we are running that. I lost the number. And today I have a special guest, like I used to say. Uh, somehow an athlete and somehow an actress today. She was an athlete, she's an actress today. I have the honor to receive Raga Ragnars from the series Vikings. Welcome, Raga. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Know, we are all smiling and uh, well, I, I, I didn't want to lie or to pretend, but I can't. So um, we're going to say the truth uh, uh, and talk about the story we talked before we start this, this, mm -hmm. uh, this show. I realized today, guys, that uh, we, know, we knew each other and, uh, and I didn't know when I contacted you and everything. And today <laughs> when I start to watch the show, because I, I have to, I'm not going to lie, I never watch all Viking series. I watch the first season and... <laughs> <laughs> gotta catch up. But now, now, now I'm gonna now I have a good reason to do it. So uh, yes, it was course. season six, episode one, and after 20 minutes, I said, I know that girl. I know her. And I swear I call friends and everything. I said, I know her, I'm sure I know her, and I'm sure she's going to recognize me. So <laughs> Raga. <laughs> Not just remember, we were friends. Yes, we were. We were friends. Yes, we were friends. Yes, we were friends. <laughs> and we lost we, we, we lost touch base, I don't know how, and here we go, yeah. here we are. <laughs> we always would meet at swim meets. We met in um, Athens, in Montreal, we met, we met a few Marie meets. Nostrum. Marie Nostrum, probably, we met in Canet or Barcelona, or meeting like this, probably. Always in Canet, we would, we would hang out in Canet, right? So, so for sure. In Barcelona. For sure, we spend time, this is crazy, this is crazy. Life, the world is so small. We, Dude, you it's good together. to see you, it's been 15 years, you know that, it's been 15 years. <laughs> <laughs> don't tell anybody that and, <laughs> we're not that old I'm only 17 you, <laughs> it's a joke I know <laughs> you, you didn't like you barely changed I, I know I, of course we age of course but still we you like, haven't changed either <laughs> I mean I'm sure I'm sure if we if we get in a pool and we race <laughs> I'll win but <laughs> Today, probably. Today, today, you, have, you probably have a chance to win because I'm really? not doing that much. But uh, I won't give up that easily. That's right. that, okay. that I can tell you. <laughs> I'm swimming every day, not competitively or, or racing, but I think I could, I could do a good 50 meter, and then it's just done. I can do a good 25 meters, and then I'm done. Okay, good 20. <laughs> 25 yards. <laughs> so let's move on. Let's move on to to. My show where we are yeah. now, <laughs> all, all the talk. I think that I picked the right name uh, for my show because you know, uh, as you know me, I'm not someone shy to who doesn't dare to talk to anyone. So you talk to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> so I remember that. I decided to name it to name it all the talk for that, and uh, because and as well because I want to bring different topics and talk about uh, stuff we could probably inspire people and uh, to get to know to get to know exactly what you're doing and what. Where you are at now. So, when we met, you were a swimmer, and I'm curious to know when and how this envy to be an actress starts. Where does that come from? I always wanted to be an actress, and I always knew that after swimming, I would pursue acting. Ever since I was seven, I knew it's going to be an actress. So, that was always in the back of my mind. Finish swimming, do that well, and then go into acting. So, so basically, yeah. You finished in 2012 because I know that you were qualified for the Olympics and you had a beautiful news. Yeah, I, I, uh, I, I qualified for the 2012 Olympics. We were doing preparations for it. They changed some of the, some of the uh, system before the 2012 Olympics with A and B qualification times and stuff. And I was training all the way up until the Olympics, but I got pregnant a few months before. So I was three and a half months pregnant when the Olympics started. And I was happy that I was at home and just resting and not racing. <laughs> so I have a seven-year-old son. What's his name? Breki. Breki. We, we moved to that. So you want to be an actress. So you finished in 2012. Yeah. Obviously, you have to raise your kids as a baby. So yeah. No, I mean, I just let him take care of it. He just was crawling right. around and I that's was what acting. We wish, that's what we wish sometimes that, that could happen. So you, you, are, you are by your, by your kids at the, at, the, at the time and you now decide to 
How, how, did, how did you start the journey? Uh, where did you study? How did you go? I saw that you went to New York. I saw that you at some point studied in LA. I actually studied, I never studied in New York. I studied in the New York Film Academy in okay. LA. Okay. So in Los Angeles, I was in the New York Film Academy um, for an eight week program, and then I liked it, so I did a one year. Um, and then I lived there for a couple of years, did, you know, worked for a little bit worked on a few really cool TV shows, met some cool people, worked on Westworld and Scandal and things like that. Just, mm -hmm. just the tiniest little things I was trying to get in and, you know, would meet cool people in the industry. And um, yeah, and then I moved back to Europe and I knew that I wanted to be on Vikings. Ever since I saw the first episode, I was like, oh. this is the show. And I didn't have an agent. I didn't know anybody. And I crawled my way through and made it to people who knew people who knew somebody, you know, it was just, a, a, it took me a couple of years, but I finally made it through to Michael Hurst, who writes the show, or wrote the show. Mm -hmm. And I literally just kind of crawled my way in. I was like, oh, I want to be on the show. I didn't even say I want to be on the show. I'm going to be on the show. I am on the show. And he was like, okay. <laughs> so, a while. so did you did you cast for it? How, how did it happen? I mean, I mean, you went collection to collection. I mean, you might have a, a cash for it. Of course, no. obviously, you are from Iceland. I went in there. I came in and I said, "I am the new queen." <laughs> no, I didn't say it like that. I was I was just determined to get in. And then it took a little while. And then all of a sudden, the um, the the head of casting called me and said, "We want to bring you in for a, a screen test." So they flew me to Ireland. I did a, a screen test with Alexander, who plays Bjorn, mm -hmm. who um, is Gunhild's husband on the show. And it was, it went really great. And then they cast me. And it was just amazing. I was just, you know. And that was the beginning of that journey. Yeah. And then I, after that, I, I went to Ireland to film. And Ireland is beautiful. And it's close. It's just a two-hour flight from Iceland. So I would go back and forth, and I would have somebody bring my son. My parents would help. And so it was a, it was a really good experience to be filming in those beautiful locations and, it's, it's, and be so close to home. It's all filmed in Ireland. It's all, everything is in Ireland. Yeah. yeah. So uh, when and how do you, because uh, I know there is a period when you are shooting and some period where you are promoting. So in what period are we, are we right now? Are you shooting? Are you, did you? Oh. You That's what you mean. Are you, are no, you we're done. We're done. We, we're done filming, but we still have the second part of season six coming out at some point. I don't know when, but I'm excited because it's going to be amazing. Season part of season six. So question Second is, part, yeah. So you will have a season, a season seven in Viking or they stop in season six? Like you season can six. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Season six, and we see surprise. So. No, I mean I think that's that was the end of our yep. filming, but they're doing spinoff, I think, um, of the season. It's a it's an amazing it was an amazing show and so many fans. So they're doing a spinoff. So I looked at it and looking at the costume, it looked very real, very authentic. I look at the the, the fight scene, the war scene where you are playing a huge role. You are yeah. a, a leader and you are fighting. And, and in the Viking time, women were very well represented in the army by the men and fighting along the men, sometimes better than the men, like in the show, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, I, and I like that. Uh, 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 did you learn anything when you were going into it? Obviously, you're from Iceland, so this is your history, right? So you know the Viking history. You probably studied yeah. school. So getting into it was easy for you. Yeah, uh, the Old Norse is Icelandic, basically. Uh, so I don't, I didn't have to change anything when I got to speak Old Norse. Mm -hmm. um, so I just spoke Icelandic, what I speak every day. Um, I did have to learn some fighting, and the first thing um, they said to me when they gave me a sword and a shield, and I was doing fight scenes, they they gave me choreography, and I was doing it, and then they were like. You have to breathe while you do it. And I was like, what are you talking about? I'm breathing. They're like, no, you're going. <gasps> and I was like, oh, I'm a swimmer. I, if I'm doing anything hard, like 
I just go underwater in my mind. So I was holding my breath and just slashing people with the sword and the shield. And then I realized I wasn't breathing. So, so I had to learn how to breathe and do physical work because we don't know how to do that. We just know how to, and then just do it. <laughs> <laughs> you but, yeah, there. I did. I get, I got a lot of uh, a good uh, training with the sword, killing people. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> so how long did it take you to masterize the choreography and to be uh, like comfortable with everything, with uh, the, the costume and everything? Oh, the costumes are, it's one of my favorite things. The hair, the makeup, and the costume. Once you get that on, you start feeling differently. You just get, you know, the armor on. You get a sword and, and you, you stop being yourself. You look in the mirror and you're like, Rah! you know, you just want to go and charge and kill people. Um, the, the fight sequences and the choreography of that, I don't know, mastering it would be a, a tough sell for me because I was like, I just want to make it look good. Mm -hmm. And then every time we would be shooting, it would be different because when you're rehearsing it, you get a lot of time and, and then you're shooting it and it's go, go, go. And, you know, there's a lot of people and there's horses all of a sudden everywhere. And you're like, oh, okay, this is going to be a different thing than, you know, in a very secure environment on a mat. You know, you're just all of a sudden on a field. There's mud, there's rain, they're throwing at you, you know, sand and blood. And it's so different. So um, it's, it's good to know the choreography, but then you just have to do your best and make it look good. And then there's cameras everywhere and you have to make sure that you turn towards the camera or this way or that way. So it's a lot of things to have to think about within you know, a few minutes of shooting. Um, so yeah, it took a while. It took a while to get it. But once you've got this, it's kind of like dancing. Once you've got the steps down, you can kind of try to you know, figure a way through a, a herd of, of angry Vikings that you have to kill. <laughs> it, looks, it looks really, really good though. You look uh, like you're mastering it. Huh? <laughs> Making me look good. They made me look good. The so, stunt department, amazing. They're just, they, they have these, you know, they, they can see tiny, tiny little things and details that I would never have thought of. And I'm like, oh, that makes sense. You know, there's, so they're, you know, all the departments, the hair, the makeup, the, 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 um, the costumes, the, the armory, the stunts, everything coming together and everybody has attention to detail of everything. So the, the, the stunts, they are, they are kind of your coach a little bit on, on, on yeah. for, for, for those shots. They are coaching yeah. you a little bit. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. So, so this is a little bit uh, a rem wink or remember, remember, remembering your uh, 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 past as a swimmer where you are yeah. coach and you are, you, are coach, you are coached by someone. But what I want to get, get at is, did you at some point, because I'm sure I, did, I had a little experience with actors. I, I coached in a small, a big production, not a big movie called The Covenant back in the days with Taylor mm -hmm. Kitsch. And the guy who played in uh, uh, Marvel, I don't remember his name, is uh, uh, one of the, the Winter Soldier, I think, in the, in the Marvel mm. and guy. And they were not in shape. Yeah. And they were supposed to be a swimmer in the movie. And I was supposed to coach them. And I knew that, that they were shooting during the night. And I had, had the, the pool available for them at 6 in the morning or 7. They were coming straight up sometime to the pool. They were not swimmer at all. It was really, really tough. I realized that what they were doing, some some days were very very hard. This long and me as well. I was on set and mm -hmm. spending lots of time on set uh, for five minutes help or ten minutes help or fifteen minutes help. But those guys are there all day. But then when I'm not there, I'm going to train because they have to be in shape for the movie. Then when they, have, they, are, they are in shape for the movie, they have to eat the the right way. They have to promote it. They have to. This, this is crazy. But I think crazy. About, sorry, it is. It's crazy. It's, it is, a, it's, it, it it's is. not glamorous at all. It's it's very. I, I do. I do think that, and I want to. I want your point of view on that. Uh, as an athlete, training twice a day with the, that regime that we have when we are swimming is not that easy. And today I'm coaching, and I know the value that I learned when I was a swimmer, when I went through all those hours of training and the sacrifice that we did, and everything. There is today is lots of stuff are easy for me to do because I've been through that. And yeah. I, want, I wanted to know if. For you, I'm not saying it was easy, but to compare with some other actor who didn't have your background, 
how did that look? How was it for you? Did you meet some people or some other actors on the set who were really, really struggling physically? Did you make Yeah. Your... I think uh, as, an or as, a, as an athlete, you have a different mindset. I am always prepared. I am always on time. I just have this whole, um, you know, all you years. Them? Yeah. And it's years of conditioning of how to do things and, you know, and you want to do it right and you want to, so I would be prepared. I would know my lines. I would know everything that I was supposed to be doing, what time I was supposed to be where, and just like swimming, you, you don't show up late to training because then you're in trouble and you're going to be stuck doing push-ups for an hour, you know, <laughs> if you, if you if you dare to be late. So it's imprinted in my head that, you know, I'm, you know, the, the the whole you know routine is just different um you know i don't go out partying until two in the morning if i have to be up at six in the morning or five or four in the morning but some people do that so i met some people who didn't have the discipline and you would see them struggling and i'm like what's up They're like oh i'm hung over you know or something or i you know i'm not prepared and thankfully most most of the actors on Vikings are very professional. I'm not ta I'm not saying um, on Vikings just on Vikings, just in general um, in this business. Uh, a lot of people lack the discipline that that um, I feel grateful to have as as an athlete. That I have all these years of, of training <laughs> done with, you know. And on the stress. I guess it was the same, right? Like uh, the, um, the excitement of the, the shot or sometimes I know some director and it's not, not that easy or the day is long for everyone. So yeah. sometimes there is pressure, sometimes, so. Yeah, and it's, and it's sometimes, you know, it's, it's hard work, especially with, with a show like Vikings. It's, uh, it's very physical mo most of the times. So even when you're indoors, it gets very hot. They have these uh, fires going everywhere and it's, smoky and you're you know you get tired really easily so you have to be able to um focus and you know meditate or take a, a break when you have a break and actually you know relax like we would do when we were swimming you wouldn't you wouldn't be swimming at five in the morning and then you know five in the afternoon and you would be going to the gym and you wouldn't be running a marathon in between you go and rest you know what i mean like and that's that was uh something that i found very like important to do rest when you got a minute you just sit down and be like i'm not going to do anything for a minute here now you, you yeah you use the word and i love where you do talk about preparation and this is what i do today coach by coaching i want to prepare my athletes the best way you know i want them to yeah. be prepared the best i can and this is preparation takes a lot of things because you can you can put a lot of stuff in the basket of preparation that's for yeah sure and when you mentioned that it's a uh, your, some of your coaches or your coaches in the past are going to be happy because you remember it. You remember it and you still act like, uh, like, uh, <laughs> How can you not remember it? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. I want to move on. I want to move on to uh, to uh, like not uh, not uh, uh, bad topics, but I, I mean an actual actual topic. And yeah. and I'm going to start by what I start with you, the role that you had as a woman in that period in that show. Uh, we are in an area where today women are, are fighting for more for the right and trying to win a little bit more in, the, in, that, soci in that society where there is a different, different, lot of difference equal, of equality, of the money, of yeah. the way they are treated and everything. And talking about this, and I told you it was a period, the Viking where the women were almost are equal to the men. You were on the field yeah. and, fight, and fight. So. Today we are not in that world anymore. When once once that you you play that role, what do you have to say when you talk about feminism and all those stuff as a woman today? And you are going through this, and you probably knew the story and the history of uh, women in your country before, but it's not the same history in every country, and stuff change. What's yeah. your, what, what's your hot take on that? Iceland is apparently um, at the forefront in in equality. Okay. Um, I grew up with the first female president of the world. She was, when I was growing up, that was my role model. She was our president okay. as a woman. Mm -hmm. And um, we have more equality here in Iceland 
than apparently anywhere in the world. Yet we're not fully equal. So it's, we're, we still have a ways to go, but I feel lucky and grateful to be able to be in a country where at least I have seen more equality than a lot of my friends from, from Europe, from, I used to live in South Africa. I used to travel all over the world in the States. You know, I've, I've been everywhere. And to feel um, like I have this uh, knowledge of more equality than basically anywhere else in the world, I'm grateful for, but we still have a ways to go. And um, I'm tall. I've been tall since I was 12. I was six foot two when I was 12. So I've always been, been um, physically strong, physically tall, um, and not, you know, scared easily. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? So I haven't, I've never felt for myself that I can't defend myself or stand up for myself or, you know, be amongst the guys, mm -hmm. you know, since, um, since being in the pool all the time, swimming, training with, with uh, men, it was always a competition, like, oh, I'm going to beat the guys now. So for me personally, it's been it was it was a great experience to be on a show where the women were equal to the men as much as they were um you know fighting alongside them you know there were there were women who were running countries or running armies and i feel i feel great i mean i feel grateful for for having this this foundation of being an icelandic woman who's tall and strong mm -hmm. but i do realize that that's not the case everywhere in the world and we still have a long way to go. But for sure, for sure your, your background and, uh, and the way you have been raised for sure helped you on that, on that way. And it is, this is sad that it's still the case. In, I know that in the movie industry or every industry, there's always scandal and stuff like this. And there is always yeah. people who are not treated, treated the, the right way. But that this, is, this is, I think, very, very good for people to see a woman, to see that in that period, mm -hmm. that period in that area of the time, Women were, yeah. You know, you, it's a it's a way to educate people as well. You know, it's uh, exactly. And I and I feel, you know, when I was younger, I didn't realize that this this equality um, didn't exist everywhere. We I remember when I was when I was young, um, we had um, a, a woman become Miss World, okay. and I remember just look. I was probably eight, seven, eight years old. And we had um, in Iceland, the strongest man in the world. He was, he was the, the, the strongest. And I remember thinking, we're the strongest and we're the most beautiful. And that was, that was my thought. I'm Icelandic, we are strong, we're beautiful, and we have a woman president. And that, that, was, my, that was my way of growing up. And then I remember when I realized that this, this was not the norm around the world, I was thinking, oh wow, women around the world aren't, you know, confident in in the workforce, in in athletics, in every in a, in a lot of in a lot of ways. And I I have been, and I hope that you know, just me going into the world and going, we're equal, right? What are you talking about? Is this not a thing? It's but that's what it's supposed to be. I, I feel like it's supposed to be a non-issue, but it is an issue. Mm -hmm. You know, so I think uh, what I'm trying to say is just hopefully we'll get there, you know, with the whole world to just have that as a as a non-issue, whatever, whatever you are, we're all equal, you know. In, and that bring me to the, the recent, the recent uh, American and George Floyd story. I was really happy when I saw your, your post this morning or yesterday morning uh, with the, the Black Lives Matter uh, flag, I would say. And what, I mean, we, I could talk about it, you know, <laughs> so, yeah. but, I, but, I, but I like you, I mean, I like you to tell me what, what you think about it. And if, I know we don't, we don't, we're not supposed to make political, political stuff or, and stuff like this. It's not even a political thing because it's just a humanity thing. Exactly, you know, it's, exactly. It's, it's just, just and, and I know that I have a lot of followers um, on Instagram and I feel like, trying to make my voice heard, you know, trying to help, trying to educate myself on the matter too. I've seen videos this week 
it's frankly breaking my heart mm -hmm. not having seen those before um you know it's 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 just heartbreaking that this is what's going on. And in America, I used to live there. I used to love it there. I haven't been in a while, you know, since last year, but it's, it's, uh, it's always been, you know, it always has a place in my heart. And then you see all this. I have so many friends from all over the world of all races, of all mm -hmm. backgrounds and I know that this exists because I've talked to people um, about this. I've, I've talked to good friends and, and um, you know, we've heard stories about racism, about sexism, about everything. And it's, I feel like it's, it's a, it's such a shame that this is an actual problem in the world because that's it shouldn't be. That's it. I'm going to move to another topic where I want to yeah. talk about, uh, I want to talk about uh, your future and uh, your professional career. And lots of people think that actor is the payette, it's nice, they run to a film to another and it's easy and everything. And as I know it's not, because I know it's, it's, it's not glamorous. Not as well. So you did that show. Uh, you probably continue or not. We don't know yet. But I mean, I mean, this show is, is something that's going to help you out to do more. So what are your ambitions next? What is next? What is next to you? I'm sure you are casting for some other stuff. Can you tell yeah, it's, it's, been, <laughs> share it's been fun. It's been, it's been quiet. Um, you know, you get castings, you get, I'm very tall. I, I've been very close to booking great roles, but then they say, oh, you're a little too tall. The, the person who's going to be, you know, right next to you is, and I'm like, oh, Okay, great. <laughs> so it's it's a it's a very specific kind of role that I can play. I can't do everything because of my height. Um, well, I feel like I can do everything, but apparently the movie industry doesn't feel like I can do anything. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I've been I've been uh, I've been auditioning, and I've been I've been here in Iceland now with my son, just. Uh, loving life with him, taking care of him, and he's got school and he's got everything going on here. So it's been great to be able to be here um, with him and not have to be traveling all over the world. And sometimes I try to take him with me. Sometimes somebody's taking care of him here while I go and work for a little while. But it's been great to be here. Um, I've been doing just odd jobs here and there. I've been I've been washing floors and you know just doing whatever needs to be done when there's off time so that's the thing with, with as an as an actor you're not working all the time and you have to figure out what to do in between projects but um yeah i feel uh, i i hope that the that the film industry will will you know start up again soon i mean covid has locked down so much of the universe and or universe world our planet mm -hmm. i feel the universe because i feel like i've been yeah. locked in yeah. here for yeah. a long time but yeah. Few months is nothing compared to, uh, to you know, what has happened in in history. But hopefully, um, borders will start opening and we can start you know working again because everything in this business is so, you know, all over the globe. So yeah, hoping that you know. We're gonna restart soon. We're gonna restart soon and uh, and and move better and move forward for you. Like he is, he seems to go. He seems to go right now. Are you looking at uh, being? Uh, are you are you looking to a specific role or specific kind of movie that you want to do? Do you still want to go through a TV show, or you want to act in a movie, or you, you are ready to take any? At this point, I'll take whatever is out there. For me. No, I mean it's true that you know, as an actor, Shouldn't if you get offered, uh, I'm directing a movie. I'm looking for a character. If you want, you don't have to audit. You can come. And <laughs> can I just do it? Okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> but I do, I do love, um, I do love action, like in, in Vikings, if I, and that's the athlete in me, the athlete in me wants to fight and run and climb up a building and jump off and, and, you know, flex my muscles a little bit, <laughs> but the actor in me wants to do, you know, something, something really, um, you know, good, deep, you know, something gritty, sink my teeth into a script and just, you know, <laughs> A brave art hole for you, like uh, maybe two, 
you know, bring those two together, something, some, a, a good role that has some uh, action to it, you know, would be great. <laughs> With the determination that I feel you have, that you didn't lose. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> uh, I, I'm, I'm, not, I, I'm not worried for you. I do think that uh, even. Thank you. That's, that's the thing is, is, is coming back to sport again, where all of your struggle, all of your failure sometimes, because we fail in sport. We don't make best time all the time. And you stand up again and you strive and you fail and you move again and you fail and being a, beating your best time could take four years sometimes, three, two or four. But the only reason we make you move forward because you feel that you are improving before, because you feel that in training you are, you are, you are responding better because your stroke count is better because you are pushing stronger in the gym. You feel like I, I can do better. I can swim yeah. faster. Even when you go best time, you touch your wall, you touch your wall. Ooh, I could have done this, I could have done that and, and be better. So yeah. this, this has no limit and, and that's, this is great and I think it's helping you in your, uh, in your uh, career today. That's 100% 100, 100 sure. Right? Yeah, I mean, as a swimmer, we, we weren't born and, and went to the Olympics. It was, it takes blood, sweat and tears to get there and, and sometimes a lot of tears and sometimes it's, you know, very hard and it's years and years and years. And I've had people come up to me and say, you're so lucky you, uh, you know, you're strong. I'm like, it's not luck. It's five hours of hard work every day for 20 years. You know, <laughs> it's not luck. You get there. But that's, that's for sure. That's for sure when you don't have a role, when you're struggling to find a job, when uh, it's not that when the industry you know, doesn't work the way you want, you still have that mentality which should help you. And, and that's an advantage for you. That's why I think you're going to make it. You're gonna make it that for sure, for sure. You make it. You made it already. That's the step. We're gonna go for go up and up. go higher and higher every time. <laughs> <laughs> this line, this line won't stop. So I always end my show with a, a not personal question, but uh, I want you you to tell me if you can share with us and a story that you learn, like something that. Came to you from the experience on set, you know, in that business where our funny story that that you that happened to you as an actress, doing doing what you are doing. Did you have something any little fun stuff that you could share with us? Something fun. Um, well, without giving name, if you have to, don't give any name. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I will. I will name drop right now. Are you ready for a little name drop? Because this is a funny <laughs> thing. I, like I said before, I was I was working on Westworld. Okay. And it wasn't it wasn't uh, a big thing. I was an extra, but then um, yeah, I was I was basically an extra. But a lot of fans now have have uh, you know sent me messages like on Instagram and stuff, going, "Are you in the last episode of the first season of Westworld?" And I go, "Yeah, I actually am. <laughs> I'm standing there, you know." But I was I was on um, I was on Westworld. And we were shooting for a whole week um, and it was nighttime shooting and we were in Malibu and I was standing, it was cold, it was very cold um, and everybody was cold and I was wearing a very tight little black dress with the open back and I was freezing um, and I was standing somewhere in the, uh, on the set, everything was being set up and Anthony Hopkins, he comes up to me and he says, you must be cold. <laughs> And I go, hmm? yeah, yeah, it's it's a little cold. And and he says something, uh, I can't remember what he said, but I said, yes, sir. Because he is Anthony Hopkins. And I just said, yes, sir. And he goes, you can call me Tony. And I look around and there's nobody there. And I'm like, nobody can verify that I actually can call Anthony Hopkins Tony. <laughs> and I'm like, is this real? Okay, cool. All right, Tony. <laughs> and then I just went back to being really, really cold on set and feeling like I could wave to Tony whenever he had a scene coming up. Hi, Tony, we're friends now. So that day he, was, was, he was so professional, yet so nice and humble. Yeah. And um, it just made me, it made me go, oh, wow, when I'm big and famous, I'm gonna be super nice to everybody <laughs> because he was so nice to me. 
And I've, I, I've worked with, with big name actors who aren't nice to somebody that's below you in rank, you know. Like I, I've been an extra on a bunch of things when I was working in, in California way before I did Vikings. And some famous actor would be there and it'd be like, they wouldn't even look at you. And I'd be like, oh my goodness, okay. <laughs> Excuse me for being here, <laughs> but yeah, Anthony Hopkins, such a gentleman. That's a good. That's a very good story. I like it. <laughs> very nice. um, moving to my last question, uh, yeah. if you had to give a good advice to someone like you who's dreaming about this, this and want to be an actress, and want to be an actor, and want to make it in a business, what would be the best advice you can give today? Um, smile. <laughs> throughout because it's a hard road and if you just smile throughout it and I'm you know just maybe be happy because the the struggle it gives you a lot in the end too so even when you're struggling even even when it's not happening you you need to keep going and do it with with uh with happiness and, and smiles because it's never going to be only uphill it'll it'll go down and up and down and you know but yeah it's it's if you're not having fun doing it why do it that's my that's my philosophy on doing it. everything thank you very much it's like a curve of uh, of progression is soon people like think it's going to be like this but yeah. gonna, uh, uh. you have to be you have to have fun while going to an ice cold pool at five in the morning <laughs> i know <laughs> It's not always fun, but you have to find the fun in it. You know, you got to find your friends, tell a joke. You know, we're all in this together. We're in a nice cold pool at five in the morning and it's snowing outside and, you know. So today it's a special day because I met again a friend Then I lost yeah. 15 days, 15 years ago. And I'm very, sad. I'm very, very, very happy. I mean, that's, that's, that was the best surprise that could happen. I uh, know. Now we got to find pictures. Now we got to that we actually now, were uh, friends. Now we have to, to meet again outside of this business and, uh, yeah. and, and share more. Raga, thanks a lot for uh, being with us and sharing so much with us. Uh, Thank you for having me. It was a blessing for me and, uh, and I'm, I feel really, really, you know, thank you very much. Thank you. That's, uh, that's going to be a good, good, good push in the back. And I wish you all the best for your future. Uh, I think that uh, you have, I love, I love your personality. You have a great determination. Uh, yeah, you, you seem to not have scared. You know, maybe you are scared, but I mean, you, you want to move forward and forward and forward. <laughs> so good luck to, to the rest of your career for the future. And thanks again. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. It was so much fun seeing you again. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Raga. This was... Thank you was the episode I told you again I don't remember which one maybe 11 or 12 you subscribe there you click right there you put a thumbs up put a thumbs down give me some comment bad or good it's a free world right so uh, thanks again this was all the talk with Raga Ragnars thanks again Raga and uh, you guys I'll see you soon bye bye bye